Jewish sages teach the following. Su era ve tov. Weaken the negative and strengthen the positive. In order to see our desires manifest, we must learn to feed the voices of possibility in our head. It's the voice that says, I can and I will. And along with that, we are to extinguish the voices of negativity. It's the monkey who lives inside each of our minds that tries to convince us that we are not enough. Research shows that the average person thinks up to 80,000 thoughts per day. That breaks down to 48 thoughts per minute, which is on average one thought per second. Here's the real kicker if that statistic isn't mind-blowing enough. 80% of the thoughts we're thinking are negative. And 95% of those thoughts are on repeat. We become a broken, broken record of negativity. Manifesting your desire is a dance between lessening the negative energy, the negative thinking, the trauma and increasing the positive energy, the positive thinking, increasing your vibrational frequency. There is so much therapy around going backwards into the trauma, but not enough emphasis in empowering the good. Therapy is great. I'm a therapist. I love therapy. Knowing why we do what we do and what's holding us back is necessary. We should notice what's there. What are the negative thoughts we think daily? What is the trauma we carry from our past into our future? What is keeping our energy low? Once we get clear on that, we must spend a majority of our time and energy on visualizing the good, amplifying the positive thoughts and feelings, and maintaining an energy of joy. Because the bottom line is, when you feel good, you manifest miracles. So how do we start thinking less and just being more, right? We're called human beings for a reason. How do we start experiencing good and attracting more positive outcomes in our daily lives? Rebbe Nachman teaches that ha'elokut hu balev, godliness is in the heart. If you want to find out where your greatest power lies, You must deal with the heart rather than with the thinking. As human beings, we can overthink everything. So much so that we can talk ourselves into a frenzy over a decision or a fear. This overthinking is generally stuck in memories of the past or visions of the future. When you're at peace, you're living in the present moment. So how do you know if you're living in the past or the future? Well, I'll tell you a secret. When you experience regret or guilt, you're living in the past. When you're experiencing fear or anxiety, you're living in the future. I recommend writing this next one down because it's a biggie. You cannot suffer from the past or the future because they do not exist. What you are suffering is either your memory or your imagination. Jewish wisdom teaches in the Gemara, it says, Hashem, God wants our heart. Back in the day, a righteous person would just take off his shoe before prayer and it would rain. He would receive abundance. It was as simple as that. They knew how to be with God in their hearts back then. Today, we just overanalyze and overthink, which is why we aren't living from the heart, and it's why we're not manifesting as a result. The goal is to connect your heart to God's heart. So what is the mechanism that disconnects us from our heart space? It's called moralistic judgments. It's a character that we each have living inside our mind, And I call that person or that entity SAM, S-A-M, which stands for our self-assessing mechanism. We all have a SAM. You have a self-assessing mechanism in you, just like an internal auditing system for any organization. There is a self-assessing mechanism in your mind. And once in a while, you'll catch yourself thinking certain thoughts such as, 
What am I doing with my life? What's going on? Am I going in the right direction? Should I go here? Should I go there? Should I date this person? Should I not? Should I take the job? Should I not? Is this okay? Is it not? The more you question yourself in this way, the more you are doing a self-assessment and the more you'll find yourself feeling self-centered and self-torturing. This is what it means to either live in the past or live in the future. This Sam disconnects us from our heart. And with so much thinking going on, what opportunity do our hearts have to breathe, (sighs) let alone connect with the people and experiences around us? The Baal Shem Tov teaches where your thoughts are, that's where you are. So if you're sitting listening to this tidbit somewhere in the world, but your thoughts are sitting beachside in Bora Bora drinking a daiquiri, Your entire being is located in Bora Bora. That's how powerful our thoughts are. Now, I'm not telling you not to think, but what I'm saying is that we have to relearn how to think. Because when it it comes to manifesting our desires, your feelings are your GPS system. And overthinking can distract us from listening to that internal guidance system. Judaism teaches that we are meant to think. We're meant to make a decision first from our logical, rational mind, but not to dwell there. Once you've taken the first step and used your logic and rational mind to determine if something makes sense, you are meant to then center around your heart in order to manifest that reality for yourself. You can only touch the soul when you crack open your heart, when you get real and in touch with your emotions. Give yourself permission to feel it in order to heal it. Yes, this is scary because when we open our hearts, we open ourselves up to pain. But the only way out is in. So the leading question I want you to ask yourself this week is, what's alive in me right now? In other words, what do I want? What excites me? What gives me the tingles and butterflies? What puts a smile on my face? And on that same token, we must also be aware of the negative energy that's alive in us right now. Ask yourself, what am I afraid of? What am I resisting? What belief is holding me back from achieving greatness? Get clear on what's alive in you this week. That is the first step to figuring out what's in your heart. And once you clear the clutter, you open a space to be able to tap in. The Baal Shem Tov teaches that when you learn to acknowledge what's going on inside and when you've created a space to feel those feelings... That alone can create a tremendous release and for the solution to appear. Sharing is caring, so if you liked what you heard, pay it forward. Share this with a friend. And as always, happy manifesting. Happy manifesting.